actually, we should have heard it because when they marched in, they played with both things. They played both an anthems. When they, they did, marched yeah. In. But do I remember it? No. No, I don't remember. Do it. I remember the Namib Namibian anthem? No. 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 I'm not a, uh, I'm not a musical savant. As a matter of fact, I can't carry a tune in a steam shovel. That's what I <laughs> as you all know, as you watch me close the show, attempting to sing "Good Night Irene" on things. Another thing, our uh, current occupant of the White House um, stated was that. He doesn't believe in alliances. No. His theory is no friends, no enemies. Um, um, unfortunately, he seems to be far better at making enemies than he does at mm. making friends. As a matter of fact, most of our senior allies or traditional allies um, can't stand him now. No. And they're saying so. Do you see that wonderful picture of Andrea Merkel oh, staring yeah. holes right through over it. the table. Was arms crossed and this. He didn't look too happy. S E G on his face. Off right there. Merkel mer grin. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> S E G. S T G. Anyway, then. So I don't know if you uh, exactly when we came on the air. So we might not have described the fact that a singer, a senior White House official. When asked to describe Trump's foreign policy, basic foreign policy <coughs> theory, replied, we're America, bitch. That's, mm. that's the policy. And of course, immediately, everyone who heard that um, wanted to reply, no, we're Russia's bitch. <laughs> <laughs> um, because actually, American foreign policy at the moment is to support Russian foreign policy. Right. Even going so far as to him to petulantly say that they should readmit Russia to the G7. Why are we having meetings without Russia at the table? <laughs> why? Because they, they invaded their invade. neighbor and took over Crimea. That's why. That's it's why. in the record. And they sent all those troops up there. Yeah. But apparently that record was one of the ones he tore up. Okay. Oh, and then everybody. You, you love this thing? It turns out that Trump has a habit of tearing up official documents. Some he just rips in half, some he rips in little tiny pieces. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem to matter what they are. Some of them that, that apparently have actually been things that he's signed and then torn it's, up. That's good. I like um, this. And there's a whole staff of people whose job is to take scotch tape I was and tape these um, <laughs> jigsaw puzzles back together so that they can go in the archives. We're paying um, for that. Yeah, that's good. Well, they make the like sixty-five thousand dollars a year. Oh, okay. You know, but the two leaders of them uh, got summarily fired <laughs> for no expressed reason. They wanted to know the reason that they were fired. Both of them had worked there over twenty years, mm. and the only answer they were given was, "You work at the president's pleasure." <laughs> so. You know, what's okay. his, what was his trademark line? Oh. You're fired. <laughs> that's, the, that's the line, yeah. So he's carrying it along. Um, and then, on an interesting note, Fox News called him a dictator. Yeah, I saw Fox it. News. That wasn't bad. I like that. One of their commentators got carried away <laughs> and was trying to praise the upcoming summit when she said, no matter what happens, this is going to be history making this meeting between the two dictators. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. I like that. And then when she was called out and challenged on it, probably threatened with her job, she wasn't smart enough not to offer this explanation. Oh, that was just a Freudian slip. Oh, boy. Meaning, of course, she doesn't know yeah, what Freudian slip it. means, right? Because Freudian slip means I accidentally said what I actually That's meant. Thought, you know? <laughs> it's just the thing. So what do you got over there, Michael? I don't know. You know, after all that great news, I don't know what the heck is what we could come up with anything to beat the stuff you've been pouring on. Oh, they're going to—they're going to um, lay uh, the ashes of. Oh my gosh, I can't even think of his name now. Um, who the, the the chef? No, the, um, oh, isn't that terrible? The two suicides, but no, the, the, the 
the, the guy in the wheelchair. Oh my God. Josh. No, no, no. Um, the the the. The, um, the black hole guy. Your, yeah, the physicist. Yeah. Phys okay. um, oh. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. folks, you get to see how smart we are. Yes. Yeah. We can't think of Stephen Hawking's That's name. That's it. <laughs> Hawking. Well, his ashes are going to be placed at um, Westminster Abbey. I figured there was the a fifty percent shot. If I started that sentence, that's it would come out at the end. Westminster Abbey. Yeah. Well, it, that seems very yeah. appropriate, you know. And uh, yes, we had these two high-profile um, um, suicides, suicides which terrible. apparently, you know, is a real danger of affecting that's other a, people on a, things. That, those are um, they both had young teenage daughters yeah. um, that they left behind and stuff. Now, interestingly, you know, I'm such an old guy that basically I don't know who either of those people are. Oh, really? No. I, I'd heard... Bourdain's name, I didn't know what he oh, did. He's, he was And the good. other person I'd never heard of. I enjoyed watching those shows yeah. with him. I really did. What were they on? Well, Food. No, no, but no, I mean... What, what channel what were they on? I think he was on different cable stations, yeah. you know, yeah. food channels and things yeah, like I that. And then he had... Be, yeah. And I think he had some stuff on public television and he right. traveled around. He, did. he started in P-Town washing dishes. This is what I hear, is he got his... His start in restaurants yeah. washing dishes in Provincetown. He would eat um, stuff in these different countries. Oh, yeah, they showed him that. He would and, go and, and drink. That's yeah. probably why I didn't watch it. And drink a I lot. I don't want to see people eating bugs. Yeah. And, stuff. and well, then, um, hey, hey, and Kate Spade, I, you know, I wasn't, I'm not a big, obviously you can see, not a big fashion person. I'd seen the name, but I didn't realize she was sister in law to the comedian David Spade. Yeah. For yeah. what? So, she was sister-in-law to, to comedian David Spade, who used to be on Saturday Night Live, and oh, he was yeah, friends with yeah, Chris yeah, Farley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And and her niece was at the uh, Tony Awards. Oh, okay. Um, a Bohannon or something like that. Oh. I, I can't remember what what her name is. She's an actress. Um, anyway, you know it's Terrible. sad, but but to me it's no sadder than you know. Harvey Konofsky in Milwaukee who committed suicide. I mean, mm. It doesn't make yeah. doesn't make any difference to me because my reaction in both cases was who. <laughs> but I mean, when you think about it, you know, there's, these are people that they say, say for all intents and purposes look like they just have it all and life is wonderful. But it isn't. Yeah. You know, they feel alone among millions and you know hundreds of thousands and millions of people. And think about the yeah. everyday person who feels mm -hmm. like that and. These well, things as they trigger. Say, as they say, can't buy happiness, no. right? I, I, but there's the Good Samaritans, you can call that. Yeah, and, I thought know, he was help. always troubled I, when really? I watched him on this show. I, I, he can't was, buy me love. <laughs> can't he, buy me he, love. He was top. I thought he was top. She would have loved the show. Yeah. He really would have. Because all, everybody was getting into it, the people, the cooks. Well, the, after he died, people said really nice things about yeah, him. You know, that I heard some of them. Run nice into him in little right. towns in the... Right. In the far west, where he liked the 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 interesting hotel, yeah. you know, and and that that he'd sit and talk to you and all these nice things about it. But I had no idea who he was. But you know what's interesting? It's the same week that this happened. These with these two people, the book on Robin Williams was published. Okay, Robin Williams. Who wrote it? Oh, yeah. some guy I never heard of. I yeah, but heard so, of you know, either, but I saw yeah. him on television. Is it authorized? <laughs> I don't I think it was because yeah. he talked about he spoke with his kids. Okay. Well, the so. Celtics did their best, but. Oh, <gasps> wasn't that wonderful? Wasn't that wonderful, Golden State? Oh, my gosh. Yes, I know that you're a big uh, fan of. Uh, Anybody but. Of the king. <laughs> Anybody but the Cleveland. I was like. Yeah. Now, where's he going to go? He's not going to go anywhere where he's going to win. Well, the thing of it well, is. We don't know that yet. We'll see. No, 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 there's nowhere for him to go where he'll win. Well, I mean, it's not to say he won't win again. It's just that he was, he's just been so cocky. Yeah. And so now, you know. But well, he's clearly not a player who can make an average team great. No. You know, well, if he, he was, they would have won at least one game. You know? <laughs> The and end. the thing of it is, is you have to get this giant LeBron James, the king and all that. And little teeny Steph Curry just, I mean, it was one game. Kip Steph Curry had 33 points Kip and he had. Shooting it over. Yeah, he had 29. Shooting it over. Yeah, no, it, that, um, it, it, was, it was pleasant. And the fact that he goes into the playoffs 
openly publicly shopping yeah. for another team to leave for is another mm, reason yeah. to root against him. Well, you know. But you know and, what? I, and then Stevens doesn't get one vote as as a good the best coach. Nothing. Really. Not one vote. Okay. What hey, I, listen, they did very, very well. I they think came, they did. They came, they came close. They were a good what, bunch well, of players. What I thought was uh, to Oakland's credit is after they won, I want to say the second game, you know, a lot of these towns, people in these towns, they tear up the town and they go crazy. The people just stood in the street and danced and partied. My, my son called uh, from Virginia, and uh, he's he goes to these games at the uh, – for the for Washington, and he said they really got wild last night. It was, oh, you mean the, oh, you're talking the about the hockey? hockey. Yeah, hockey. No, Capitals. I'm talking about I'm talking about out in Oakland, when when Oakland isn't it San Francisco? No, the Golden State Warriors. They play in Oakland. Oh, do they? Yeah. I always thought they were San Francisco. Well, I mean, the, I mean, because you got the bridge on they there. Got the bridge. Yeah, yeah. but yes. I mean, well, you have to cross the bridge to get okay. over there. But no. I mean, you have, you know. I mean, look what happened when the Bruins won one year. They won, for crying out loud. They won the whole thing, and they just tore up the causeway. But instead, they showed these people outside of, the, of this arena just partying and dancing, yeah. and dancing with one another, and they didn't well, do anything th dangerous. Philadelphia is most famous for tearing up the town. You know? Yeah, well, see? I love, I love the fact, you know, the current occupant, he got his nose out of joint, which <laughs> is his pretty thing, because... The Eagles didn't Le want to come. Less than 10. So This is a, so big, said, this is so a biggie. He, so he uninvites them, right? Yeah, and, but and then he says he's going to hold it. He's going to hold the event for their fans. Patriotic to, exercise. To honor the national anthem. And not a single person there knew who Philadelphia's quarterback was, knew the score of the game. It turns out that his crowd at his thing were all people from the Republican National Committee who were ordered to go show up there. <laughs> <laughs> and then he tries to sing and he doesn't know the America words. the Beautiful and he doesn't know the words. The Star and, Spangled Banner. I mean, yeah. but oh, what, a, what a fraud. He turns out the employees, there's all these Philadelphia fans in suits and ties and, and et cetera so, standing there. And they all came from the Republican National Committee. Yeah, but okay, uh, now let's get, get to the, the new rules. And both teams in basketball for, said, don't bother. Don't, they, uh, doesn't uh, matter who wins, we're not, we're not going. going. <laughs> are, are these, but are these players, when the season home, are they going to sit in the locker room? Some of them will. They, I bet you some of them will. But yeah, to but me, I mean, that's, that's, that's an invasion that's of free speech. That's an insult. It, it is. It is. That's a terrible thing. They're, they're sitting in the locker I'm room. I'm surprised the ACLU's not in on insult this. Insult to what? If, if they don't want to stand during the national anthem and instead of taking a knee. No, they've given, given, given the option. But the owner of the Jets has already said if any of his players kneel, he's going to pay their fine for them. Oh, I hope Good so. Him. Okay. Now, the funny thing is he voted for this stupid rule, which is – as un-American and unpatriotic as anything they could possibly done. Right. I mean, it certainly made me disinterested in watching the National yeah. Football League. I won't watch it this year at all. I don't care. I'm not watching a single game. But he voted for that stupid rule and that he turns around and says, if my players decide to kneel, I'll pay their fines <laughs> for them. Um, these guys, are, it's all money. You know that. I mean, there'll probably be some teams where the entire roster will kneel. Yeah. Or the entire roster will we'll stay, stay in the locker room. Well, I mean, we got a quick quickie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it is now a little past time for this evening's uh, edition of the uh, Big TV Unrehearsed Thespian Society's presentation for this evening, which... Um, comes from uh, the, the beginning of the last um, fresh presidential election out of, out of the vault, and it is entitled appropriately, Patience. Patience, <laughs> Patience action. Okay, uh, let's say, isn't that a Gilbert and Sullivan operetta? Yeah, but it's not about Iraq and Afghanistan. President uses it a lot. I got a friend whose wife has dementia. Is it the onset of Alzheimer's? A patient man. We talk about things she likes. Does it help? Yeah, it helps that night. The science and neurologists are optimistic. 
So is the ex ex Surgeon General Cameron. Yeah, come on, Carmona. Carmona. I bet he couldn't say so in public. <laughs> Harry won't talk either. Says executive privilege. What under a House subpoena? About those fired U.S. attorneys. Alberto already said he can't remember. But, but the war goes on, even has a surge. Uh, getting nasty between D.C. legislators. Bush says to wait until September. September? What year? <laughs> Bounty on bin Laden's been doubled. Palestinians don't read that much English, you know. Well, it's Pakistanis. Well, Pakistanis either. <laughs> well, well yeah. Scooter Libby wasn't at Walker's Point. Yeah. Uh, Putin caught a big fish there. Yeah. And Libby just got a pardon. Yeah. Cheney's keeping a low profile. Maybe one of Bush's aides leaked it about flame. Yeah, he, where's Condi Rice? She's Secretary of State. Stay the course. But well, we're off course. On a golf course? Of course. <laughs> Malaki says we should go home. Sure, the Iraqis can handle security. What about benchmarks? Footprints. Check out armpits. Uh huh. We'll cross that root canal when we come to it. <laughs> Our guys are serious. You would be and too. You, and you would be on your third tour in Iraq by now. And the Taliban keep reviving. Jordan and Syria cut millions of refugees. What a mess. Yeah, that makes sense. But we're making progress. General says so. Just ask the Brits. You mean the doctor's conspiracy? Yeah, radical extremists. Ed educated terrorists? Maybe we should get out of Iraq. How? Well, I'm not the president. Soon George won't be either. Then it's up to Congress. <laughs> oh, yeah? What about the Iraqi parliament? They need a month's vacation. This summer. They got all that oil to share. But the insurgents keep blowing it up. You know, even Hugo Chavez is offering to help. That would really destabilize things. Oh, you mean maybe a sectarian civil war? Been going on for a while. It stops in September. You know, guys, I'm depressed. And he's not even wearing an explosive vest. Time to go. That's the easy way. I'm talking about the Iraqis. And you can't speak Arabic. How'd you like to be a translator? Who'd insure me? Well, they do agree on anything. Don't eat Chinese fish. Uh, okay, that's a start. Too much negativity and pessimism. Well, our leaders are optimistic, aren't they? But Michael Chertoff is worried. That's good enough for me. Well, get over it. <laughs> our guys are fighting over there. Patience is a virtue. Good bumper sticker. We need something new. Okay, that works. Ask the Iraq study group. Seen that? Done that. Well, Tony Blair's always available. Jack, Ab Jack Abrams. Yeah. Well, what, a, okay. what about it? He's, he's serving time, Jack Abrams. Okay. As a, as a consultant. Our boss trusts him. So do the tribes. Yeah, and he trusts Harry, Scooter, and Alberto. There's no explaining taste. We need a crisis room. Sure. Why not put Wolf Blitzer in charge? He shows war clips. And approval ratings. Boy, it's going to be a long, hot summer for presidential candidates. That's right. But don't stand next to an open mic. Face it, a curd is a curd. Well, I'm ready for dinner. To leave or not to leave? Good question. I like a Gershwin tune. How about you? I mean, George. Yeah. Right. Blank out. Back All right, patience. From that's pretty crazy. 2007. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So that's that's the that's the way we go. That's the way we go. <laughs> yes. And um, I got I you know we were talking about uh, LeBron James and I was thinking about this statement that was in a Globe uh, this uh, Globe writer uh, Volin I think his name is. Anyways. He's, all these players uh, like uh, Gr uh, Gronkowski gets up and everybody says, well, what, what do you expect, you know? And of course, his horse came in second. I was going to say, his horse came in second. Yeah, at Belmont. What do you mean he gets up? I mean, what do you well, mean? They, they evidently, they, the reporters want to know why they didn't go to the um, OTAs. Uh, okay. Anyways, uh, 
Tom. It's a pretty as, pretty good answer. Yeah. I didn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> Tom gets up and talks about this, and one sentence stuck to me. He said, "It comes down to this: winning is everything. You know, it comes down to that." Okay. He doesn't say anything about Mr. Belichick, the coach, about winning that last game. And for him, he's, as he's getting older, he would like to have won that last game that they mm. lost. Well, I'm sure everybody on the team would have liked to have yeah, won the, the last game. Yeah, the whole team would have, but the, Belichick kept that other fellow sitting out there. Butler. And he it was saying he should have sent him yeah, Butler. He wouldn't play him the whole game. There must have been a reason. Well, that's what, what I found. Why didn't this reporter say something about that in his article? There has to be a reason. Why doesn't Belichick say something about it? Because well, Belichick doesn't say much about anything. <laughs> but there's but, 50 other people. But I think he. I think the reason the, the reporter didn't say something is because I think they... Um, they don't want to bring it up. Well they, well, they don't want to bring it up because maybe the Belichick won't deal with them. That's possible. The other thing is that, that um, Malcolm Butler doesn't want it talked about either. Yeah. Because Malcolm Butler would like to have a job playing football in the National Football League. Yeah. Now, I think that's... And, the, hit. and there's a very, very good chance that if somebody forced Belichick to say why he didn't want Malcolm Butler on the field, Malcolm Butler would have a very small chance of ever getting a job in the National Football League. Well, wasn't it supposedly because he was, he, he was late for some... Allegedly, he was late for some practice yeah, or yeah, something. Yeah, but, it, but the thing is, is it throws the cloud of suspicion on Butler, and and, for, and you know Kraft's not going to get rid of but Belichick. It's a, I, but it's I a, seriously doubt whether that was the whole reason. For it's it. a Super Bowl game. Come on, you know, try to win it. And here's they his, didn't lose it because Malcolm Butler was no, on the bench. Yeah, but here's, here's the, the Tom brings up this business about winning. This is serious for all these players. They all would have made a big piece of ch extra change if they had won. Yeah. How many more games can Tom keep playing at the, at the level he's at? He wanted that game. He wanted to win that you game. You know what? He'll it's win. sort of like I used to say about the Red Sox. Okay. Who cares? <laughs> okay. Who cares? You know, they're a bunch of Trump, Trump bully boys, and uh, who cares? Okay. All right. You know. So Justify is the 13th horse to win the Triple the first, Crown. The 13th horse to win the Triple Crown and the first one to win it as being undefeated. As and a second, second, yeah. Second to win it being undefeated. And isn't this jockey and the he oldest? Really, he really ran. He never had much of a clear lead in the thing. Yeah. I mean, he had no, to bust a but gut. But he did at the end. I mean, he won the Kentucky Derby going away. away. Yeah. But he really had to work to win this one. Yeah. And he went from wire to wire. I mean, he was first out of the gate, and he just yeah. stayed there. Stayed the whole time. It was, uh, it was interesting. Well, and this is the oldest, and this guy's the oldest jockey. And isn't he one that he's won the, he's won the Kentucky Derby t twice in a row or I something don't know, like that? Possibly. He has. He's I mean, several times. I always, I always, strangely enough, feel a little disappointed when Bomb Baffert wins <laughs> something big. Okay. I don't really know why, but I just don't uh, like Bob no. Baffert. Now that's the trainer? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So when is out of the Encore Casino now, is that he changed the name, now the Encore Casino. Yes. The one okay. never... Still, still not open. It's, yeah, but... Well, it's not you know, finished, they were, is it? Can you imagine the Mohegan Sun is so worried about uh, what's, what's going to open up soon, the MGM, the other side of the state, that You're they, talking Springfield? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want to say it. You know, didn't want sport. to say Springfield? No, I don't want to. We like say. Springfield. Well, okay, so, M so the Mohican Center is so worried that. That, uh, no, and I'm supposed to think of that again. Okay. See, uh, that they're what? That, uh, what are they doing? What's Mohican Center? They Sun are going, doing? they just got the state of New York to tell them that they can get ready to open up a, a place opposite them in New York. Opposite whom? Uh, MGM at Springfield. There's no New York opposite Springfield. Well, they think on that end of the state they can they can be closer. Okay. How Hit we? the keyboard, my friend. Well, oh, we got four minutes. Oh, are we out? We still got a couple of minutes, minutes, but okay. Okay. We. Oh, 
I was watching the red. You're watching numbers the red, again. not the green. I get caught watching the red numbers. I don't, I don't watch the red. So uh, okay, so the, MGM is going to open a casino in New York. When are they going to open it? Well, they're not. They're not. They're preparing to. No. When, oh, when's MGM, MGM going to open? It's, it's supposed to be at the end of nineteen, or maybe even this summer. The end of the hmm. summer. They were saying that. They're not sure. You mean it's either two months or it's a year and a half? Well, I don't think it won't be a year and a half, but they'll get it open. I, this is the problem. I'm listening to you. Yeah. I, well, I, I can only tell you. I, sometimes confusing. Well, so, what, so how, how I'm cool confused when I read about this and Crosby, who's the head of that commission. Oh, yeah. yeah. So how can you? What is stiff? Well, I, wouldn't, I don't say. Why he's, he's still stiff. there. Okay. Doesn't doesn't uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. And I'm more Charlie news. Have the authority the, to the, get rid Juan of that stuff. The got okayed by the by the government. The Wampanoags that they can open up on Martha's Vineyard. Oh, cool. Yeah. Martha's Vineyard and not New Bedford or or Martha's Brockton Vineyard. or wherever it Martha's was. So wait, they're going to open a casino in Martha's Vineyard. Yes. So it's not expensive enough already to get over there. <laughs> then they want you to spend some more money, lose more money. Well, you know, they had gotten a plot of land, I forget, New Bedford or, or, yeah. or Brockton. They'd well, gotten they, a piece of a, land. They have a place, a hall already in, uh, in, the other, in the other side of... I mean, granted that their, their certified Martha's reservation Vineyard. is on Martha's Vineyard. Yeah. And the fact of the matter is, since we have authorized casinos, they have an absolute right to open a casino. Yeah. The whole fight was where it was going to be. Yeah. So I'm not sure that they're all that happy they, with that well, decision. Yeah, but they're saying they only want to have uh, slots in there. I don't think that'll be okay. terribly successful for them. Yeah. Good night, Irene. Good night, Irene. Irene, good night. Irene, good night. We'll see you in our dreams. Good night, Irene. Good night, everybody, from the fun show Happy here at day. Big TV. Uh, we will be back. The good Lord will and the creek don't right. rise. Uh, next week, same time, same station. Um, in the meantime, uh, let me remind you once again to vote for Tommy Vitolo for state representative in the town of Brookline. Um, and I'm also terribly upset about what the Democratic Convention did to Bill Galvin, oh. the best statewide official in the last 30 years yes. in Massachusetts. Uh, Zakem, was that? Was Don't mention his name. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Well, his father was a nice guy. His father was a great guy.